Hello, this is Chief Geronimo of Agency Tribal Nations and the Mendocino Indian Reservation. You know, this here project is the service to be able to um, reopen um, schools and government facilities. And you know, I, I give my full interest and as a federal uh, FEMA officer and contractor that um, I do believe that the services that are about to um, you know, be introduced to the, um, to the community and to the world that you know, it is for the people and the best association of services. And I endorse this by Chief Jarmo. Thomas Langdorfer of the services of FEMA and the United States government and tribal governments to be able to associate this service in the best interest of our people. Thank you, Chief. I'm gonna share the screen now so that we can get our slides on. Okay, hopefully everybody's seeing the slides. Nice. Good, good afternoon, good evening. I'm Leonard Atlas, the founder and CEO of Synergistic Sanitizing Solutions. And tonight's presentation is really COVID-19 Emergency Pathogen Reduction Solutions and you've already met the chief, and we're going to be focusing this evening on the solutions, but also the funding solutions that are available through the federal government. So the two biggest questions we're asked these days, first and foremost is, how do we protect our buildings and occupants to keep them safe with proven technologies? Whoops. And how do you pay for it? So we're gonna address both of those questions this evening. And then you, it's important for you to understand that our goal, our goal is to harden the pathogen reduction infrastructure. And that's a new term during COVID, the pathogen reduction infrastructure of any indoor facility to help Fisherman. them stay open or reopen safely, effectively, quickly, and affordably while helping management reduce their risk of liability and negative potential publicity. And our mission as a company is to protect as many lives as possible. So the first question that people ask is, what is the real threat we're dealing with? And this threat is invisible. It's our breath. But don't just think it's the breath. It's also, unfortunately, flushing toilets. When we, ex when we exhale indoors, we generate a plume of pathogens from our air. So if we are contagious, because we know that humans now are the source of contamination and transmission. Just like flushing toilets, it puts a lot of bad things in the air that other people breathe, and that's how they get caught. So we've been wearing these masks and there's controversy indoors and outdoors and things like that. But the reality that we deal with is people are afraid of breathing shared indoor air and we look to correct that and end that. So the real question is, how do we make a choice? What do we choose to clean our spaces with that's human safe and pet safe? Now on both the left side and the right side, you'll see various UV technologies. UVC lighting has been used for over a hundred years in the healthcare industry because it's very powerful at killing things, but it's also not human safe. So we're going to make a distinction right now that there is human safe and non-human safe UV technology. The ones you're looking at here are not human safe. So they get turned on, there's a little delay switch, 30 seconds later, you run out of the room and these things sanitize an empty room. And they do a very good job cleaning emergency rooms, uh, operating rooms, st grocery stores, but they are not human safe. They can cause cancer and blindness. So there has to be another answer. Now. There are many, many government reports and studies that show, so the CDC last year said, we recommend mounting UVGI technology, that's our kind of system, eight to 12 feet off the ground. ASHRAE, which many of you know is the American Society of Heating, Refrigeration, and Air Conditioning Engineers, recommends the same thing, but adding fans in the room. And then we have the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health with their pyramid. And if you see at the bottom, the least effective, but still important is PPE and then social distancing. So the three boxes that you see with the red dotted lines, engineered controls, substituting the hazard air and eliminating it, removing it, those are the things we do. So right now I just highlighted everything that says room level, eight to 12 feet off the ground. But now I'm gonna show you what a lot of people have been doing for the last year erroneously and they're now realizing it doesn't work. So this is a six story building, but it could be a three story or a 30 story or a hundred story building. They have central air conditioning normally on the rooftop. And they've been putting UV lights in the vents and ducts, and they've been putting filters and things in to try to affect the people in this room having this conversation, or the, pa the patient in this hospital bed 15 floors down. There is no way, and there is no science at all that shows that centralized rooftop air conditioning can kill pathogens at the room level. So when we talk about UV angel, which maybe you're seeing now for the very first time, so if you look at that image on the right, at the source of contamination, right over those people's heads working in that office is a UV angel that's effective at the source of contamination. So over the last year since COVID started, we've been reviewing over 400 products and we have come up with our eight step criteria, how we decide what we would recommend or not. And the first one is kind of obvious, but yet it's not, it must be human safe, not unsafe. 
There are many technologies, as I've shown you, those other UV things and all the Cloroxes and the harmful chemicals that are not human safe. We don't recommend anything that puts anything negative in the air. Number two, traps versus kills. So there are things called HEPA filters that many people are aware of and they've been buying them. HEPA filter is like a vacuum cleaner bag. It traps them, but it doesn't kill them. And technically, when you replace that filter every three or six months, technically, legally, you need to be in full, in full PPE gear because it's biohazardous waste. Number, so we're very big on safety, as you can see. Number three is third-party scientific validation versus anecdotal or no evidence. Many entrepreneurs emerged during COVID as very opportunistic with new products that they developed or, or refangled, but there is no science. We're going to be showing you the five clinical reviewed studies, the laboratory studies, and the infield studies. UV Angel has the most scientific validation of any product I've seen on the market. Number four is a big one. Once you learn this, you'll never forget it. It's called episodic versus continuous. When we spray, when we have maintenance people going through a room, vacuuming, wiping, spraying, that's called episodic. They do it at six in the morning, at noon, at five at night. Those are episodes. As you will see, UV angels get installed and they work 24-7, 365, constantly cleaning the air. There's nothing that comes close to that kind of effectiveness. Now, number five, we don't have to spend much time on because we looked at all those four government reports that say eight to 12 feet off the ground. So any device that is on the floor, the desk, or in the air conditioning has no scientific or medical validation to it. Everybody leads towards overhead installation. That's what we are. Number six is one size fits all versus custom engineered. Th Many people are going online, they're going to Amazon and eBay, and they're buying six, eight, ten of these units, and they're just sprinkling them throughout their facility, but they have no idea if what they're doing is correct and appropriate and effective. Every UV angel installation starts with the client sending us blueprints and floor plans and reflective ceiling plans, and we have a team of engineers in New York and one in Michigan that configure every single room, room at a time, to make sure that the, that, that, that the protection that we're giving is as blanket a coverage as it can be. Number seven is we're very cognizant of the cost factor, the financing and the ROI, the return on investment, especially this year when businesses have been out of business or closed or reducing revenue. So we have many financial vehicles, but we're gonna be talking about the reimbursements from the government today. And then number eight is the maintenance frequency and cost. Most of our clients consider how much money they're spending on the janitorial and maintenance staff to get episodic, ineffective, and when they look at our maintenance, which, by the way, the UV Angel once a year, every 9,000 hours, you replace a bulb and filter for $110. <laughs> it's so inexpensive compared to paying $20, $30, $40 an hour labor to be in a room two, three hours a day. So these are our criteria. And we invite people to show us the products and technologies they're researching so we can put it through our process. So what makes UV Angel strong? Well, last year, they grew over 8,000% because of COVID. And they've partnered with the Corning Glass Company. Many of you know Corning as a glassware company, but they're also a $30 billion innovator. They're huge for manufacturing and global scalability, but they're also very committed to the smart building initiative of the future. And together with UV Angel, they're working on many innovative projects. Wildan is a national engineering company that we have a master service agreement with. So nationally, if we need a client to do their installation, their maintenance and service, we can outsource that for our client. And then DLL Finance Services provides our leasing. So when we didn't have all this money from FEMA and the CARES Act, we were, our clients were leasing and they can get as low as less than a dollar a day for a lease. All right. So very, very effective partnerships. But this slide shows the brains of UV Angel and that's Dr. Linda Lee. Dr. Linda Lee is the chief science and medical officer. And she is a very world renowned expert, one of the top in the world on invisible pathogens. She has been hired by the US government repeatedly to work on chemical and biological warfare. Today, she sits on CDC committees and ASHRAE committees giving advice and guidance. And with her team of collaborators, there are over a hundred patents on the technology we're about to show you. And I'm gonna show you the science before the actual product. UV Angel has been tested and certified on 88 pathogens. Now, the one that we're dealing with, coronavirus Wuhan, we've highlighted in yellow. And if you follow that across the road to the right column, you'll see 100%. That refers to a 100% kill rate one time through the unit. And you'll see what the unit looks like in a moment. You'll also look a few lines below it to Ebola, which is still very much a crisis in Africa and other parts of the world. UV Angel is effective with Ebola. UV Angel kills mold. Many grocery stores are enjoying, the not only grocery stores, but also indoor, indoor growers of cannabis and hemp and other crops because UV Angel takes the bacteria out of the air so the crops grow better and longer and live healthier. Here are five peer-reviewed independent studies. 
that anybody who wants to read them, we're happy to send them to you. This is not UV Angel talking. These are peer reviewed studies, which are very, very ethical. Now, recently we've had 11 different clients hire a third party company for independent air quality testing. And you can see from a hospital pharmacy to a hospital, to children's hospital, to more hospitals and a nursing home, you can see the decrease. Now you'll see air and surfaces. So on this slide, you'll see the, these top three quick service restaurants, these are McDonald's. And you'll see that we've actually reduced the air of the, the bacteria on the surfaces. Now, how does that happen? Because UV Angel does not guarantee that it cleans surfaces. It's not a vacuum cleaner, it's a sealing device. But think about a snow globe. If you shake up a snow globe, everything's up on top. Now imagine if you had a vacuum up on the ceiling and as everything was shaken up on the top, it gets removed into that device. UV Angel is so effective at killing pathogens in the air that there are less to land on the surface. That's the magic of it. Okay, if you haven't seen a UV Angel yet, you're now looking at two different images. On the left, you'll see it installed in a ceiling tile. Now UV Angel is a two by four fixture. It was designed for hospitals, originally for, for the folks, the kids at St. Jude's ICU, very high risk children patients, really to combat HAIs, hospital acquired infections. We all know 75,000 people a year die in America. They go into the hospital with one condition and they get a virus or an infection and they die from that. That's what this technology was built for originally 10 years ago. So the unit comes in two models, with a down LED light and without a down LED light. Over 50% of our sales are without the light. But when we, occur, when we encounter clients that have fluorescent fixtures, we automatically do a swap out because we make them more energy efficient. They save money, they're more green. And in many states, they're entitled to a credit rebate for becoming energy efficient. So these units were developed for a, an operating room, a hospital room, 10 by 10, eight foot ceiling. That's 100 square feet, 800 cubic feet. As you can see, the contaminated air goes in on one side through a fan. It goes across that blue chamber. Now that blue chamber is a patented contamination proof UV chamber. The UV light is housed there. So it's in a patented contamination proof chamber and it's mounted <laughs> above the fixture in the ceiling. And those two components make this human safe. The contamination proof chamber and the fact that it's out of line of sight. UV is only harmful if you can see it. If you can't see it, it can't affect you. So every 15 minutes, this air, this unit is circulating in 800 square, uh, cubic foot space. So four times an hour, that operating room, that patient room, that ICU, that dental treatment room, four times an hour, that air is being 100% circulated and purified. In bigger rooms, we add more than one unit, as you'll see. Now this slide, and it looks a little different. We got this from the VA. We're, we're now in six VA hospitals around the country. And you can see here the UV angel with the downlight. And you can see that the, uh, Teresa Haley, who leads the infection control uh, unit there in Virginia, basically acknowledged they have not had a single COVID case since they've installed the UV angels. So that's a very powerful testimonial from the federal government healthcare for VA. Now here you're gonna see a, a variety of installations and we wanna show you the effectiveness of in-sealing UVC at the source of contamination 24 seven, doesn't take up any space, there's no manual operator needed and it's five nines of clinically proven effectiveness. So if you look at McDonald's, you'll see two by four tiles, but high hat lighting. So they chose to go with the non-lit uh, UV angel and you can see them spaced out. The average McDonald's takes 10 to 12 UV angels. And basically just so you know, on a lease basis with, with other technology that we have, and I'll show you in a moment, the lease is normally under $400 a month. So for hundred dollars a week to have 24 seven protection, you couldn't, do, you couldn't hire enough high school and college kids to clean up that effectively. If you look at Starbucks, you'll see they have big loft ceilings. So we have a mounting bracket kit that allows us to suspend the UV angels on aircraft cable. So they're still gonna be eight to 12 feet off the ground. Down below, you'll see ESPN production trailers. ESPN has contracted globally for their entire fleet to have UV angels. Now those production trailers where their staff are for hours and hours recording and editing the games, those are two by two tiles. So you can see, we just take two, two of them consecutively and turn it into a two by four. On the right, you see a Hilton hotel with a sheetrock ceiling. So we have another kit for surface mounting and recessing into sheetrock. Bottom line is we haven't met an installation where we could not accomplish it yet. Now, about a year and a half ago, UV Angel released its second product. And I like to say that this product release, the Surface Adapt, really took UV Angel and the industry of UV technology from dumb to smart. Now I say that because all UV Angel, most UV Angels are simply just the UV light doing their job but this one has GPS, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi. 
Now, what does that mean? This is a device for high used surfaces, keyboards, ATM machines, or the credit card pads, elevator buttons, shared computers. And it was specifically designed for the nurses and hospitals that are wheeling laptops around from room to room with the most sick people in the world sneezing and coughing and breathing on it. How do you clean those keyboards? So we developed this USB plugged in clip on device that has a six minute cycle, but it also has an infrared recognition. So if, if a hand comes near it, a human hand, it will shut off immediately and it's been proven safe. So the device shuts off when a hand is there, the hand leaves, the unit turns back on. The GPS is because let's say you're a hospital administrator and you've set a protocol. You want all your computers clean between every three rooms. If the GPS tracks that computer that it's gone to more than three rooms and hasn't cleaned, it'll notify management it needs to be cleaned. And the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi allow it to connect to the UV angels in the ceiling, which all connect to the app. And this is why so many very sophisticated organizations are choosing UV Angel because of its real-time data and predictive analytics. We are helping our clients remove their risk and liability by being able to prove the quality of cleaning that happened every single time in their room every few minutes. So very, very powerful that a facilities manager can have this on their phone and they can be on the campus or not on the campus and still be alerted to any troubleshooting events. Now, every building we walk into the last year has stickers on the floor where to stand and where to walk. We've turned ours into an educational and marketing campaign called the Look Up Campaign. Look up where air is being cleaned around you. Before COVID, we didn't care what, what the building did to sanitize and disinfect. Now, we wanna make choices. If there are two restaurants and one is protected and one is not, most people are going to the one that's protected. So the Look Up Campaign becomes a very large campaign for marketing and promotion. As we get to the business side of things, Everything is custom configured, small account, medium account, and large account. We discuss with our clients their scope, budget, and timeframes. We talk about all the sources of funding available to them, what makes the most sense. We alert them that we cannot generate a proposal without floor plans and blueprints for each room. And it only requires a licensed electrician. The units without a light take about 10 to 15 minutes to install. The units with light between 15 and 20 minutes. And now the rest of the presentation is gonna just deal in a few minutes on all the government funding. So the CARES Act, which dates back to the Trump uh, president presidency, issued ESSER funding. ESSER stands for um, Elementary and Secondary School Emergency Relief. And there are three funds, ESSER 1, 2, and 3. ESSER 1 was 192 million. And if you look on the right, you could see it was 129 of it was distributed. So there's still 60 million there. ESSER 2 is still waiting for appropriations. That's $784 million. And now look at ESSER 3, which just got uh, it's, wait, it's still waiting appropriation, it's a billion seven. So this is for all K through 12 schools, public, private, and charter schools. Now there are 15 allowable uses for the funds. The first 12 don't relate to us, so I blew up the number 13, 14, and 15. School facility repairs and improvements to reduce risk of virus transmission to support healthy student needs, that's us. Number 14, we could not have written any better than if we wrote it ourselves. Upgrade projects to improve the indoor air quality in school facilities, including mechanical and non-mechanical heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems, filters, purification, and other air cleaning fans and control systems. That is exactly what a UV angel does. And then number 15, maintain operations and continuity of service and continuing to employ existing staff. So the point is when UV angels are in there, the risk of getting contaminated goes down tremendously. Okay. Um, this just shows that the CARES Act also does fund private schools. That, that question's come up a lot with us. And then we have FEMA, which was put into act with uh, President Biden. So you can see that FEMA is assistance may be required by states, including territories in the District of Columbia, local governments, and tribal governments to provide for the safe opening of operations of eligible schools, child care facilities, health care facilities, non-congregate shelters, domestic violence shelters, transit systems, and other eligible applicants. I'll show you what that is. And those specific languages, including cost-effective hazard mitigation to protect the facilities from future damage. This is the first time FEMA has ever done a pro preventatively, and it also rewards 100% reimbursement as opposed to 75%. Now, here are the four sectors we were told about was coming out with FEMA. And you can see there's a very long list in education, emergency medical, utilities, and emergency services. And we thought this was gonna be the whole enchilada. And then we saw the next page. 
non-critical essential social services. Now we're talking about child care, assisted living, alcohol and drug rehab, food banks, homeless shelters, libraries, museums, zoos, senior center facilities. Lots of facilities are entitled to 100% reimbursement. And here is the process. Clients go onto the website, we give them the link, they have to fill out an application, putting in their tax ID number, and they start the relationship with FEMA, and they get an approval, they send a paid invoice, and they get reimbursed. They're calling them accelerated reimbursements, which we are told are between 30 and 60 days. So as we end the presentation, we ask people, what would you like to do next? Would you like to review the scientific studies? Would you like to send us the blueprints to get a quote? Or would you like to schedule a, a follow-up Zoom presentation with the rest of your decision-making body? So with that, I want to thank everybody for their time and look forward to hearing from you as you talk back with Chief Geronimo and his partner, Daria.